This week in PlayStation, we're talking about our review of Street Fighter VI. We're getting all that and more because this is PS I Love You XOXO. <laughs> What's up, everybody? I'm Tim Geddes. That's Blessing, and that is Khalif Adams, and this is P.S. I Love You XOXO. Of course, you can get the show on patreon.com slash kind of funny there you can watch us record it live get it ad free and get dozens of monthly episodes of exclusive content if you have no bucks to toss our way support us on the epic game store fortnite rocket league or fall guys with the creator code kind of funny you can get ps i love you for free with ads and without the exclusive content on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and podcast services around the globe uh thank you to our patreon producer Delaney Twining. Thank you so much. You're always so good to us, Delaney. Uh, today we're brought to you by BetterHelp, but let's start with a PSN message from you. Uh, the PSN message is this blessing mm. from Nikki Loeb. If you could have one PlayStation-owned character added to the roster of a new fighting game, such as Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat, who would you choose and what would be their signature move? Ooh. Bonus points for coming up with an alternate costume idea. Ooh, okay. Damn, this is I was not expecting this. Okay, this is a lot. Um, it's funny because for Mortal Kombat, my immediate go-to mentally was Kratos, but that's already happened. Kratos was in the PlayStation version of Mortal Kombat 9 that came out back in the day. And so if I'm, if I'm not going Kratos, I got to go somebody else who is extremely violent. And I feel like a lot of the PlayStation first party characters, oh, well, actually no. There is one franchise that PlayStation has that is extremely violent, and that is Last of Us. Mm -hmm. And so maybe, oh, <laughs> does Joel fit in, La in, um, in Mortal Kombat is the question. Can Joel throw hands with Scorpion in Sub-Zero? I mean, maybe a, a Last of Us 2 Ellie. Last of Us yeah. 2 Ellie is pretty, is ruthless, yeah. I think if you give Ellie a shiv and like a, um, like a, a, a machete... Give her weapons to rock with. I'm I'm putting Ellie in in, in Mortal Kombat. They're all about the rope physics in Last of Us Part Two. Maybe the rope use that to pull people in. Oh yeah, that could be like her scorpion get yeah. over here type move. Yeah, I like that. And then her alternate skin would be Ellie from 2013 Last of Us. Wow, <laughs> you're gonna play as young Ellie for her alternate skin. Yeah, yeah, that, that's good. Cleve, do you have any any answers for this one? Oh man, I would go Astrobot. Let's okay. go Astrobot. You know, we can flip it and have, have that character do multiple things, be multiple things at once. You, have, you don't have to worry about multiple skins because it can just form whatever kind of thing it needs to in the moment. It's like the all-in-one, both mascot and kind of dangerous weapon that you could find in, in, in that I, yeah. larger ecosystem. That's actually really good. I would love that. Put him in Mortal Kombat. I want to see that yeah, horrible not? design get fatality. <sighs> <laughs> Any chance I get, Flash? There's no, but there's no blood squirting out of Astrobot, right? Oh, like you, they'll, they'll you find could. a way. You cut off Astrobot's head, and it's just like oil. Yeah, <laughs> oil and water just spurting out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can do it. Yeah, it's funny because we have seen a couple examples of this. Like, I think Kratos in Mortal Kombat, that's awesome. Yeah, we did see it, and I think that makes a lot of sense. But like going beyond that, like we look even at PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale and the characters that were there, or even the characters that weren't there. It's funny to imagine PlayStation characters like fighting together. I guess it would have been weird to imagine Nintendo, but they figured out making that work. Uh, but I think applying the Street Fighter logic doesn't work as well for some of, of these characters because I, mm -hmm. I feel like Street Fighter, clearly the world warriors, as they call them, they each have their own unique fighting style and like place they're from. I, I'm struggling right now to think of a PlayStation character that has like a I, unique identity that's both location based and fighting style. I got you, Spider Man. Ooh. Peter Parker, hailing from New York. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, Spider-Man would be great. Yeah. I don't know that that technically counts as PlayStation-owned character. Sure. But, but I that like is it, a PlayStation though. Studios like icon right there. Yeah, like that. that is more of a Marvel or Sony, however you want to how to count that. But I, I think if you want to bend the rules a little bit, you put Spider-Man in there. And one, speaking of PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale that I didn't think of, that could work, I think, well in a Mortal Kombat, Sweet Tooth. I think you you get that Ooh. character. You got you got the vibes already. Mm -hmm. You got the the violence of it. And then I I can easily imagine a sweet tooth fatality that is him getting into his uh, vehicle and like just mowing down Scorpion or shooting down Scorpion with gu guns or whatever that looks like. I think that would make a lot of sense. Yeah, in the Spider-Man 2 trailer we just saw at the showcase, we we saw Miles doing little like electro Kami, Hami, ha. Hadouken uh -huh. type thing, you know? So like mm -hmm. that that could be that could be interesting. Give Venom Peter in there. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. 
A lot of fun options, everybody. Hey, sticking with the fun of fighting games, Street Fighter VI, it's here. It's here. And it's our topic of the show. Tots, 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 tots. <laughs> Releasing on June 2nd, Street Fighter VI kicking off what is hopefully going to be the renaissance of fighting games, uh, trying to take the FGC and making it more mainstream than it has ever hopefully ever been. I think that we are on the precipice of a moment for the fighting game community, uh, for both the people that have been there the whole time and for people that are gonna be jumping in for the very first time. I think that this year and next year, we're gonna see some people get into Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Tekken, Project mm -hmm. L, all for the very first time. But Blessing, Ka, both of you, I know, are big fighting game fans. Are you big Street Fighting fans? Are you big Street mm -hmm. Fighter VI fans? We're about to find out. Bless, I want to start with you as the official reviewer here of Street Fighter VI at Kind of Funny. What would you give it on the Kind of Funny scale? So, you know, you asked a lot of questions there. Are we, are we Street Fighter fans, right? Like, are, are we Street Fighter VI fans? I am coming into this as the Street Fighter game that I'm trying to put my whole self into, right? I, I played Street Fighter back in the day. I liked Street Fighter um, uh, Alpha 2. I liked, I played Street Fighter uh, 4, Ultra Street, 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 Street Fighter 4 for PS3 with friends back in the day. And, you know, I've dipped, I've dipped into Street Fighter uh, 3, Third Strike, and other, other games like that. I've never been, like, Street Fighter's never been my main thing, though. I've always shifted more towards a Tekken or more towards Soul Calibur or more towards Smash Brothers, and there have been plenty of other fighting games that I've gotten more into. Street Fighter Six is the one for me that I am looking forward to, or I have been looking forward to as, all right, this is the one I'm getting into on the ground floor. At release, I'm going to be there. I'm going to play online. I'm going get, to get, get real into it. I'm going to get good at it. I'm going to make this my Street Fighter game. Playing Street Fighter Six during this review period... I, this is going to be the, I think the fun, interesting thing about kind of us being podcasters and us doing our kind of funny reviews that are, I'm putting this out at embargo and my experience in this game over the year and over the years is probably going to evolve and change or whatever, and probably speak to, um, maybe my opinions shifting and changing at this moment with street fighter six. I fucking love this game. This game, I think, is incredible. The fighting mechanics are so good. They're so solid. The From what I played at Street Fighter V and what I know about the reception of Street Fighter V, it seems like in every way possible they could, they they have made this a step up from Street Fighter V. The character roster is dope. The content is there. The online mode is like fully featured. It has a lobby, and usually I hate lobbies that are run around and go meet people, but I think they found a good medium in there where it is. Oh, this lobby is actually really interesting to run it, run around in, right? Like you can find classic Capcom games hiding in here. You can find a DJ station and play music. You can uh, meet up in the middle and do an avatar battle where you're playing as your created character against other people's created characters. They have found so many ways to imbue a lot of creativity and imbue a lot of fun into the lobby experience. And then that feeds into like playing with your friends and discovering new characters and playing as the new characters. And like the fighting is there. We're going to talk a lot about the fighting. Um, at the end of the day, though, for this review, again, that is going up at Embargo, that is my Street Fighter 6 Day 1 review. I'm going to give it a four out of five. Um, and that's a great score on the kind of funny scale. I think this game is great. The thing that holds it back from attaining that five out of five status for me is World Tour. World Tour is a big part of the game. It's been one of the big things they've been marketing for the game. That is the single player mode that is going to take you through hours and hours of exploring the city and meeting characters that you know, meeting characters that are you know new, that are made for the mode, uh, going around on the streets and literally fighting people on the streets. <laughs> um, in the name. It's an idea that I've been looking forward to, and it's an idea that I've been very, uh, very fascinated with because it feels like it's coming off of Mortal Kombat Deception and that mode, like what, playing as Shujinko, playing as this avatar character and running around this world in Mortal Kombat and learning um, the different moves from the from the different main Mortal Kombat characters. I really like that mode from Mortal Kombat Deception, and that was me as a kid, right? I'm sure people had so many complaints with that mode in Mortal Kombat Deception, but I look at that with a lot of nostalgia and a lot, and a lot of like, oh, I love like a weird different thing like that. World Tour for me feels like I'm playing a PS2 mode a lot of the times, right? Like, it feels like I'm playing a thing that was, hey, let's add this additional thing because we got to add this additional thing for people, people to get into. And I think a lot of the ideas are cool. A lot of the ideas are novel. A lot of what they go for is in the right direction, but a lot of the execution is off to me. The story in Rule Tour is so much of a non-story. I do not care about the moment to moment of what's going on in the narrative. I like it, there's a gang in in the city and they're doing bad things, but then you also meet a guy that's like a mystery person. And they keep sending you texts and like it's I, I could not care less about what's going on. And then a lot of the dialogue, a lot of the cutscenes feel 
awkwardly paced it the visuals of it running around in the world one of the one of the first days i was playing it at my desk roger mccorney uh, walks past my my desk and is like hey why are you playing are you playing saints row and i'm like no 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 this is the new street fighter it's not it's, it's not saints row but i think that does speak to sort of the style and how a bit generic it is on the world tour side but then on the opposite hand the thing that i really do like about it is there are these moments where you meet Chun Li, you meet Luke, you meet Ryu, and you can adopt them as your mentors, and you get to mix and match their moves and play style, and you kind of you get to really customize your Street Fighter original character in a way that feels fun in a, in a in a way that I think is cool. And you know, like the Street Fighter combat mechanics are so good that when you get to those moments in the World Tour mode, it can be fun, it can be a good time, but I think it is watered down by just a lot of bloat, a lot of unfun open world exploration, a lot of tedious menu stuff, a lot of stuff that just doesn't feel like a modern action game. It feels very antiquated in a lot of ways. That said, the reason why I preface with opinions evolving and changing is the fact that a year from now, I'm probably not going to touch World Tour. It, my, my Street Fighter experience is going to be so much playing online with friends, playing online with Khalif, playing locally with friends, playing locally with you, Tim. And that's going to define my Street Fighter experience going forward and so i'm that four out of five is almost teetering on a five out of five because i just don't care about world tour it's not going to matter at the end of the day but it's still there yeah. that's the thing that sucks about it and it just uh real quick i want to get to cop but just to close out your thoughts here yeah. if it weren't for the world tour thing would you put, give this game a five <sighs> that's the thing that's also tough because the bar for fighting games has been raised in the last generation mortal kombat and nether realm and injustice have added in worthwhile single player content that I think really has made the argument that to reach that masterpiece, to reach that perfect score status, you gotta have something that is worthwhile for single player. If it's not a another realm cutscene style single player thing, what is the other thing you're gonna add? What is like the mode? Tekken 7 had a pretty fun um, single player mode that I at the very least enjoyed enough to like play through it and be like, okay, that was a good time and then go on to the rest of the game and fucking love that game. If World Tour, in my opinion, was even, oh, it's, it's good to great but the rest of the game is phenomenal, then I think I, I could see it hitting that five out of five. I, I do think that without World Tour, though, there is, there, there is still a lack of tangible single-player content for the casual player to get into and really enjoy the game when you go online and get your ass kicked or you play locally and get your ass kicked, right? Like, I still think there you need something there to keep people engaged on the single-player side, and I don't think World Tour lives up to that bar um and so yeah no i think even if world tour wasn't here i'd still be more on the four out of five uh, place so khalif i want to jump to you what is your history with the street fighter franchise and what are your thoughts on six god i mean i've been playing street fighter for decades at this point from the, you know being in the arcades back home in the bronx to you know getting some games in at the local pizza pizzeria and in, in, in the bodegas and, and fighting people in those places so street fighters as a fighting game fan has been you know, it, just a part of my life for so long that I don't know fighting games without it. That being said, it is it has always been my second favorite in terms of fighting game franchises. I'm, I'm a big Mortal Kombat fan. You know, I'm a big horror fan, so I love blood and guts. So if Street Fighter, you know, the thing that everybody wanted was that Street Fighter versus or Street Fighter X Mortal Kombat game. I still want that to be a thing at some point. But I think Street Fighter 6, and, and I want to piggyback off of a lot of the stuff that, that Bless said, absolutely agree with everything that he kind of shared right there i think the 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 one small albatross on the neck of, of street fighter 6 is is the world was the world tour mode and that's only because i think i went into that mode with a certain level of expectations and i and and seeing and hearing from pr how they adjusted those for me kind of helped to frame what i'm getting as opposed to what i wanted in a good way i think you know, getting a chance to jump in and play it and having spent, God, over 30 something hours in it, playing it, you know, going up to like level 56 at this point that I'm that I'm at. There's a lot of stuff there to potentially see as a good foundation for what this could be. I just don't think that it's there yet. And I think that the the thing that you will come across is there's a good balance between and I think this is what Street Fighter 6 does extremely well, which is breaks down a lot of barriers for new players in a way that we hadn't seen before, which was a big thing that a lot of folks worry about jumping into their first or second or third version of a fighting game in terms of trying to be super competitive is, do I feel like I'll be competent? Does it feel like I'm able to kind of play in the ways that I want? 
and is it is it newbie friendly in a way and i think that's what world tour is really great for it does this really nice thing of pulling you along aside some of these characters these iconic characters and new characters to say here are some things you might want to add to your move set here are some things you want to learn while you're getting better at this game and let's do something that's kind of fun with all these kind of like pieces of your avatar that you can then use in things like battle hub and, and other places which i think is really really smart I, I i wonder and hope thinking about the future is how do they kind of bolster that part of that that part of the mode right where the pieces of gear that you wind up getting wind up starting to get really repetitive it's a perfect space to kind of put in dlc uh mm -hmm. so i can see them double doubling and triple tripling down on you know having you pay for certain pieces of of gear or having limited time stuff in that in that conversations that you can pull that into uh, your battle hub character and have it look really cool when you're fighting other people. Um, but for me, the game itself is stellar. The, the the nuts and bolts of what this is. This is the most accessible Street Fighter game that has ever lived. This is one of the most beautiful Street Fighter games that have ever been put out. And it feels like no matter what level of fighting game, um, you know, a prowess that you have, you will find a way to be good within this game, whether that be through differences and changes of uh, control style will it be you know way that they kind of layer out tutorials for you this is some of the best stuff i've ever seen from capcom and and all the things that they are were worried about with and, and messed up with with five they fixed 99 percent of that stuff in six let, let me uh jump off of that what do you think they kind of missed the mark with in five and what are the things that they they solved here I mean, the, the biggest thing so far has been on online connectivity. Again, we'll see what that looks like when we get everybody on the servers, because, you know, right now it was, it's, it's, it was only press folks and kind of a small, very small amount of folks in the, in the mix across multiple regions. Um, but that was a huge part of the issue initially was just the net, network code. Um, and it felt like they were just, you know, feature incomplete with five and, and, and six feels like they've added enough that will help to kind of bridge those gaps from not only, you know, again, tutorial stuff, you know, secondary modes, you know, them having the nostalgia layers that they have with some of the mini games that you see in World Tour, which is great. And it just really feels like this roster gives you every kind of version of fighter that you want. You have your straight yeah. up and downs that are, you know, uh, Ken and Ryu, uh, Ken and Ryu, you have your grapplers, you have a whole bunch of folks who are kind of in the middle. You have a couple of, um, you know, keep away characters and JP and some other ones. So it feels like this game has something for everyone. And they've already talked about some roster uh, additions that are going to be coming in year one that will even fill out even more of those pieces as well. So I think they're setting themselves up for success in every way that you possibly can. And Lil Wayne. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so it winds up having all of those layers together that are in that conversation. So I think folks are going to be really excited on day one to be able to jump into the fold and, and get their butts kicked like it, I will. It's so funny because uh, you know, I think you're totally on the money in terms of the character roster and how they do a, such a great job of filling in these different categories of character types where I, we're in a weird way, I've been playing this game for a year because we had mm. the, we went to Summer Game Fest last year. It was there. There was an open beta shortly after played it. There was another open beta last fall. I played that. There was another open beta that just happened and then there's been the online. Like I've been in Street Fighter VI for quite some time and I've been playing as Luke that whole time. Luke is the character mm. they added in the DLC for Street Fighter V. They talked about him being the new generation. Like this is us handing the baton into Street Fighter VI and us showing you the, one of the lead characters that we're going to have for that game. And I picked up Luke, really like how, like how he played, and I did my best to get good as Luke. And I, by the time we got around to this review period, I've been feeling so comfortable with Luke. I've been feeling, not even just comfortable, I've been feeling like I've been doing a great job with Luke because mm. I've really poured in a lot of time practicing his moveset, uh, figuring out like when to pull out my overdrives, figuring out like when to time certain moves, should I wake up with this, should I do that? And L Luke is like, you know, you, Luke feels so comfortable to me now. I, at a recent uh, Street Fighter VI preview that I got to do, I started, they had more of the roster available to me because in all the betas, it's only been the same like, four to eight characters in the preview i did they had the whole roster available and so i started playing as different characters and the, one of the ones that stuck out to me was uh cami i really liked cami for her move set i really liked her for her play style i really mm -hmm. liked her for her character design i thought cami was such a really cool character to play as and so i was like okay this is going to be my secondary main this is going to be my new main who i'm going to play as and cami you know very 
melee focused, very much about getting around the opponent's projectiles to get in there, very much around, about bouncing around on screen. It has a completely different play style from Luke. I have been playing quite a bit of Cami for the last, let's say, for the last few weeks, and man, has it been, it, it, it feels like I'm learning a new game. It feels like I'm starting from the ground up, going in and, and trying to like learn Street Fighter again, and I think that is a special thing, right? The fact that I can pick one other character and it feels like I'm replaying the whole game and relearning how to play this game because their moveset feels so unique to them and their play style is so unique to them. And the fact that a few days ago I was playing online, I was playing with the homie um, Alex Van Aken from Game Informer. He chose this character who I hadn't fought against yet, uh, JP. And I was not expecting JP's moveset. Like JP's moveset is very much, he's like this you know old mystic dude who can summon uh, these portal like the, the these rips in reality basically where he'll like do that and then he does another command and then it'll like send a projectile at you from like behind you right like you you have projectiles coming at you from each and every way i was not prepared for that and i didn't know that they had that kind of character in this game and that wowed me when i saw that i was like oh shit i didn't realize this was here and so fighting him was a, was a big challenge right now if you're watching the video version barrett has b-roll of jp pulled up and yeah he's busting out a bunch of different magic coming at you from all these different directions. And it was so fun trying to figure out how I was going to fight against JP. I think I forget if Khalif was watching that actually last night mm -hmm. uh, when I was fighting Alex. Cause like, that's the other cool, that's the other really cool thing about street fighter sixes online and the lobby system. It works so well. And I've already, I've already had many moments where I can feel this sense of community. One of the things that sticks out to me a lot is during the original beta for street fighter six, we did it. Um, this, this was when we were working at home. We did a stream at, from Kind of Funny doing the beta because we had the closed beta access. And I went into a lobby and the lobbies have a big screen that show off um, different matches, people who have like the records going, oh man, this person it has 10 wins in a row, like stuff like that. And there was one of those people that popped up on the screen and me and Mike who were in the stream at the time in the chat was like, oh, we should go find that person. We should go find that person. And so we find their lobby. We... Um, I, I think their name was, I forget their name. I'll say their name was Nate or something. And um, we go into the lobby. We start typing in chat like, Nate, where you at? <laughs> trying to find Nate and trying to fight Nate. And <laughs> we get a response from like somebody named like Nathan the Great or something. Or something and they're like, oh, it's me. Stuff. Yeah, he's like, oh, I'm over here. And so we go, we find them and we start fighting, fighting them. And then we realize that, that oh, that wasn't the guy that was on screen. But um, uh, but we fought him anyway and was ha we we're having a good time. And then chat realizes that like that that this person is streaming like this person is streaming on their channel and so like we go and see and then we start like having this back and forth with this person and we're having this moment of meeting somebody else online and having fun with them that feels so natural meeting. like a community is meeting and that was so special because of the way that they've nailed this lobby system and because the online works so well that goes back to what we were doing last night where i, was, I just on a whim, went into went into the, the U.S. lobby during the review period. They have like four lobbies because there's only review people playing it. And so like I go to the U.S. one. I'm hanging out in there, and I don't. There's not that many people. And so I message in in a fighting game, like a press fighting game Discord that I'm in. I'm like, hey y'all, uh, I'm about to hop in. If anybody else wants to hop in, and so um, I I'm like hanging out, doing practice, and then well, the way it works, Tim, for open lobbies they have it's basically an arcade where there's a bunch of different arcade machines and so i sat down at one of the arcade machines once you do that if you're the only one there you can go into a training mode and so i went to the training mode was practicing playing as cami and then i get um a fight request challenger approach yeah like yeah it, that's exactly what i get challenger approaching and it's alex van Aken. and i'm like oh shit alex all right let's play that's right <laughs> yeah so sick and so i start playing with alex and then we run a couple rounds and i'm playing as cami i'm still learning cami he beats my ass and i'm like okay let me switch off of cami let me switch to Luke because I'm going to beat your ass, Alex. <laughs> I'm like, yo, I'm not going to let you do this to me. I'm going to switch to Luke so I can actually take you out. And uh, to do that, I had to like leave the arcade machine and go into the menu real quick. But as I left, I look and I see just people watching us. And it's Khalif and it's other, it's other people from the press that I know. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> we had an audience of friends that were just here hanging out. So and again, sick. that's the special thing about... One, how good Street Fighter Six is, is the fact that I think all of us are just enjoying having that experience of fighting against each other. But also, yeah, how good the lobby system is, let alone if you really want to, um, or not even if you really want to, the way the private lobby system works, if you just want to play with friends, it is m menus, right? It is, it, they aren't, they aren't forcing you into doing some like bullshit of okay, you join this lobby, all right, join this lobby at the same time, or you got to find each other. You don't have to do that if you want to play, play with friends. You can create a private lobby that is just like the menus. You, ha you can have 
multiple fights going on at the same time. You can um, watch other people play. They've made it so easy. They've like fixed a lot of issues that I think fighting games tend to have when it comes to how do you make a fun fighting game to play online with both strangers and friends. They've answered for so much, and I think it's been it's been it's been such an incredible um, breath of fresh air playing this game, uh, coming off of other fighting games that tend to not get that thing right. So, so bless you're maining Luke. You're Luke. trying to second get better main, at Cammy. main Cammy. Yeah, Ka, I want to know who you're maining as, but first. Oof. Here's a word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. It's so easy to get caught up in what everyone else needs from you and never take a moment to think about what you need from yourself. I know this from experience, how often it just seems easier to care about others and to keep it moving. But when we spend all of our time giving, it can leave us feeling stretched thin and burnt out. Therapy can give you the tools to find more balance in your life so you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind. Some of my very best friends use BetterHelp and love how helpful it can be for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash kindoffunny today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash kindoffunny. Now, Ka, who are you maining? I have so many folks on my roster right now. I, I, I'm a person who, after having learned that having gone to Evo last year, that you need to have people in your pocket, I, I am not a canon Ryu, in Ryu main. I, I, I've given up on those characters because to me, they're kind of boring. But right now, I'm rolling through JP. I'm rolling through Cammy. I'm rolling through DJ. Um, Marissa is really, really fun as a brawler. She's one of the newer, newer characters in there. Big Amazonian woman rocking it out, doing her thing. I've been playing mostly DJ because DJ just feels really interesting to play as a as a old character that's come back and is kind of reimagined in that way. So I'm playing a ton of different folks. And 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 to, to again piggyback off of what Bless said, what happens is and is what is so cool about not only the lobby system but the way the characters are kind of built out is that you can just go train for a minute. And if you're like, oh, I just got mopped up. I was watching, you know, Bless and, and, and Alex play. And I was like, okay, I know Bless has been rocking a bunch of Luke. I know uh, uh, Alex has been playing a bunch of uh, JP. What's a counter here that I can go lab really quick, figure out which ways I can kind of get into to this matchup. And then within that space, get my little bread and butter combos together, have that kind of in the back of my mind, and then jump into a match immediately and do that i i like to play a, a variety of different stuff just because i know that someone has a counter for me in, in in so many different ways i played a really good jamie the other night and i was like getting my tail kicked as um jp uh that character is just way too fast to to play against jp is who's very much a zoner and, and, and putting you out switch to to dj and then moved around a little bit more and understood the footsies game and understood spacey, spacing a little bit more and was able to kind of catch that person off guard. And that person was kicking my butt 11 to 1. I wound up flipping it when I switched to DJ and was beating that cat like 8 to 2. So it winds up then switching up the way you think about not only the way you want to kind of go into the fight, but then you have those small moments where you're just like, I understand this matchup a little bit better than I did before because I had a couple of moments prior to me going into that match to lab it. And that's mm. just a fantastic part of the way that this thing is set up so that you can do all of those small kind of mini adjustments while you're in the middle of a match or right after the match or in between while you spectate. It's brilliant stuff. I think it really has replicated what old school arcades felt like, but even better because you have a space to play while other people are playing and not have to wait. And it's so good that that's a part of what Street Fighter Six is bringing to the table. It's real good. Yeah, I think they've done a pretty good job. Um, also, speaking to speaking to people that are that are casual coming in for either the first time or coming in and not being a Street Fighter expert, being a Street Street Fighter, um, you know, like esports level player, right? Like the um, having the, tra the the training mode available is awesome. Having the modern control scheme, I think, mm -hmm. works really well. I I don't love that. They try to kind of force you to use it at some points, like in the world tour mode. And you have to use modern controls in the first chapter, which 
I don't like. Again, I get that that <laughs> mode is trying to speak to casual people. That mode is trying to speak to the people that are coming in and don't want to get their ass beat. Um, but I would have loved to be able to ac actually use my classic controls uh, from the get go because I, I just didn't like that. Um, but then can, also, can you talk a little bit more about the modern versus classic controls? Because yeah. you seem, you seem kind of down on it for you. But mm -hmm. like, do you think that the way that it's implemented in the the maybe not the world tour mode, but the actual fighting game side of it, like, do you yeah. think that it's it's a valuable? So, my, I don't, I'm not even down on it for me, right? Like, I, it, it depends on the character. And that's the thing that actually surprised me when I was playing. I went in all the way thinking that, oh, I'm only going to use classic controls for all the characters. That's the way I, I, I've learned how to play fighting games. That's the way I played Street Fighter already. Why would I ever use modern controls? And then I, what, what surprised me was there was one match that I played as. I was trying out different characters. I was trying out, oh, who was it? It was one of the charged characters. It might have been Chun-Li. Guile or Chun-Li. Yeah, it, let's say it was Chun-Li. And I went into the match, and for a lot of the characters, modern or for all the characters, unless you like change the default setting, modern controls are what they default you to. Mm -hmm. And so I start playing this match online, and I realize that I'm playing with modern controls. And I'm like, oh no, I didn't want to do this. Ah oh, shoot! And I'm playing as Chun Li, who's a character who I don't know how to play as anyway. And the thing with that is, I suck at the charge moves. Like I, I. I, I want to get good. I I playing King of Fighters 15 last year. I tried my best to like actually learn these things. For whatever reason, I'm just bad at them. And so I, I whiff half the time. Um, but I start playing as Chun Li and I start pressing triangle to put out to throw out specials. And I was and I was like, oh, actually, I can kind of get used to this. Like I'm actually now putting up a fight as Chun Li, not having to worry about the uh, these inputs right that are so precise that I'm having such a tough time actually doing. And I was actually able to fight a good match as Chun Li, and I was I've never been able to do that before. I think for me with charge characters, I'm going to be a modern controls person. That's how I'm going to go about it, right? Like I'm going to save the class controls for the Luke's and the Ryu's and the other characters that I feel good about, and use modern for those ones that are that are tough to to execute. And I think that's the beauty of it is the fact that for people who don't know about the modern controls, they're basically this revamped control scheme where you are pressing one button to do these um the, like the special moves right usually that, that that they would be you know hold back forward square or forward back um circle or whatever more to smash do. brothers esque yeah like the modern controllers feels more smash brothers esque easier to pull off and you know i the it's the seeming reason why they're trying to make this transition into modern controls is to speak to the ease of getting into the game right but of course they're keeping class class controls there because that's where that's the history of it that's where people that's what people are already used to and i think the balance works um i think it, i think it's going to be good for a lot of people coming in for the first time i think it's gonna be good for if ever a greg miller <laughs> wants to play street fighter but you know i i'm sure like for like for so many people the complaint is oh it's just too deep oh it's just it's too complicated oh it's like too much being able to go in there and go, oh, it plays like Smash Brothers. Oh, I'm just pressing one button to, to do the specials. It makes it way more approachable for so many more people. And I can see more people getting into Street Fighter because of it. What are the trade-offs for modern controls versus if you're playing modern versus somebody playing classic? Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm curious what Khalif thinks about this because I, 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 for me so far, I think the like having the variety of, of move set av uh, available. I've not played enough of the modern controls to really gleam if I'm not able to pull anything off, but I already know all the all the stuff I can do with the classic controls, right? It's easy. It's, you know, light punch, medium punch, uh, strong punch, right? Light kick, medium kick, strong kick. I And you can do those in each and every way and then also have the different forms of all the special moves, whether it's the OD move or whatever. I don't know if, you, if you're able to pull all that stuff off with modern, but Khalif, have you had experience trying to figure that shit out? Yeah, so the, the biggest difference between modern and classic, besides just the actual, like, button commands, is that you lose a little bit of ability to do combos as you would if you were doing them in, in classic, in classic version. And that all comes down to frames, that all comes down to button input, that all comes down into those small buffers that you're going to be doing within a combo string and that kind of stuff. You lose a little bit of um, variety in there and kind of uh, access, access to some of that stuff. Um, and they've talked about that not only, I think, either either on the blog or you've seen a lot of folks who have been in the FGC on the kind of content creator side talk about the limitations of what that is and why you wouldn't be able to kind of fully compete in that way. My hope is that we go to a major tournament at some point, we see somebody rock somebody yep. who's, using made, who's using modern controls, and then you just find out at the end of that match that person's like, I was on modern controls and still won. Like, that will be the cool moment that really, you know, validates what this thing is. But I think... In the grand scheme, this is a great thing for the fighting game community, and I hope that, to a certain extent, other games adopt something like this. I think one of the conversations around 
so many of these games is about accessibility, right? It's about how many people can play these games. How do you grow the FGC in a much bigger space? Because if you think of all the spaces that are esports ready, fighting games have been the kind of, you know, weird stepchild that have never really gotten their son, even though they are the easiest to understand and the, one of the biggest, most diverse spaces in the gaming industry. So it winds up being this interesting conversation about like, how do you pull in more people? How do you make more people feel competent? And if you're not trying to go to Evo or to Combo Break or something like that, and you just want to play and be and feel good about your, your playtime, how do you do that? This is a really good bridge to the, the, the uber competitive and the folks who are kind of not just fully casual, but like want to feel competent when they get into the mode. This is like a perfect thing for my wife who, does, who has like issues with like multiple buttons on a controller. She's like, I see six buttons and you just threw this into the water, like throw this into the lake. I don't know what to do with this. But now she can be competent if she really wanted to play a fighting game with these kinds of controls. Um, it was, it's great to have it. I think it's really smart. And I used most of that for my world tour uh, playthrough, to be honest. I oh. didn't switch to classic on that. I played m pretty much all of it on modern controls. Wow. Um, because it did a lot of those things of like, I am not great with charge characters. I don't want to have to deal with that. You know, for most of the time that I was playing, when I had to fight a really, you know, uh, dangerous uh, enemy, I would map out certain moves that I knew were really easy that I could buffer really quickly to those buttons that would be the easiest. So, like, if you just hit triangle, I would do a Hadouken. If I would hit down in triangle, it would do a, an uppercut. It would do all of those things because I knew that those are the moves I wanted to get out the fastest to get through certain levels of the mode. So it wound up being really helpful for a lot of those conversations about where I was playing, how I wanted to play in the moment, and you know what I was trying to accomplish. I would not use it in competition, though, what, what, uh, for me. One thing I, I, I want to throw in here for conversation is talking a little bit of the nuts and bolts of the changes they made to the fighting system, because yeah. the big new, new addition they've made is the, the drive gauge. Um, mm -hmm. and that then leads to, lends to like familiar mechanics, like the, the OD stuff, the overdrive stuff, which you power up certain special moves and like, it takes a bit of that gauge. Um, but then, then you also have drive impact where you press, um, a combination of buttons on my controller, it's mapped to R1 and you do like, you do this big move that, um, is armored that will hit an opponent and stun them for a period of time. And that seems like one of the biggest, um, um, additions on the actual fighting, um, mechanics side, because that has shifted many matches for me, right? That has changed the momentum because you can bust it out out of anywhere, right? Especially if you have, um, or if you have, you know, gauge filled up, you bust it out. And in order to counter it, you all, you either have to um, do a, a drive impact move back, uh, which takes real good reflexes that I'm not, I've, I've far from mastered it. Uh, Mitchell Salton has mastered it and has used yes. it against me. <laughs> um, but you either, either have to do that or you have to get a certain amount of hits on the enemy as they're doing the drive impact to like knock them out of it. Khalif, as somebody who has been playing quite a bit of Street Fighter over the years, right, and is coming into yep. this one, coming off of that last one, how are you feeling about this new drive gauge system? I love the drive the drive gauge system. I know a lot of folks were really not excited about the 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 V trigger system in the in the previous game. They had a lot of issues with the way that that played. I think the most interesting and fun thing about the drive impact layer of this is how professional players are going to use this. Yeah, I think it is going to be wild to see how many matches are won or lost using this thing. And it's going to be cool because just, you know there's multiple layers of how it can impact a, a, a match. So one of the coolest things is, you know, usually you would have to block a whole bunch of hits to be able to get a person into a kind of staggered state. Um, now, in the way that this works, you're, you, there isn't any chip damage that happens unless your drive meter is fully depleted and you go into the stage called burnout. So you wind up having, you flash kind of gray, you're on the, you're on the field, I mean, you're on the, the play field, and at that moment, then you can take chip damage from uh what that uh from from the opponent so meaning you're even if you block you're still going to lose your dance you lose your health that plus the way that you can basically bounce a, a character off a wall yep. and then start a combo it changes the way you think about your positioning on the on the level it changes the way you think about health it changes the way you think about moves that you want to use in the moment so it winds up you know depending upon what kind of character you like to use fully change the way you're thinking about your tactics in, in a match. And it can be the thing that not only 
put you in a really advantageous position, but also can put you in a state that's going to get you mopped up, which is, again, feast or famine kind of thing that you haven't really seen in a Street Fighter game uh, in, in a very long time. I think V-Trigger was one you knew people were going to be able to use very offensively. I think this has a lot of offensive and defensive uses that will really kind of just change the match for anyone in, in that conversation. I think this is also one of those kind of features within this game that will really play well to fe- people who are in the casual space because it will turn a match for them instantly. Yeah. And, and it's a thing that you can throw out. If you're not fast enough, you're going to get hit. If, if you're not blocking it, you're going to block, you're going to get hit. So it's, it's really cool. I love the way that they've kind of put it in there. And, and I think it's going to change the way we think about Street Fighter moving forward in a big way. I hope they don't change it for whatever seven becomes down the line. either. I think they want, they need to keep this in there to get people accustomed to it. So they have an idea of what this is supposed to be for the future. Of Street you know, that, I'm really interested in that aspect of this because I, out of all fighting games, like I'm a Smash Brothers guy, but yep. in terms of more traditional fighting games, I'm a Street Fighter guy. I can wrap my head around it for some reason. It works, makes more sense to me than Mortal Kombat ever has or Tekken or things like that. The gauges and drives and triggers and focus attacks and all that stuff that they added um, over over time has, I feel, been overwhelming. And I feel like the mm-hmm. thing that's kept me from really being like, I'm a fighting game guy. Because it's like back to Street Fighter 2, the original type stuff, pretty simple. Maybe you get one bar that you get an ultra move or a super move or something like that. With where we're at now, I feel like that is the make or break difference between the people being like, yo, this is a long-term game that we're going to play as a community and, and, and all of that. Sounds like you guys are, are so far feeling the, the drives in, in this game. Does this feel like it is going to be the new standard for fighting games? Like, do you think Street Fighter VI, with these mechanics and stuff, is going to be at like the, one of the core Evo showcase mm-hmm. titles for the next five years? Oh, yeah. Yeah, this, like Street Fighter VI is going to be on the main stage real hard. Besides... The fact that Capcom is throwing two million dollars into the pot, which oh, is automatically yeah. going to get which is huge. everybody into into the fold, this is going to bring in everybody who used to like my grandma used to play back in '85. <laughs> She's going to be coming back to to try to get some of that two million dollars. I think the beauty of the fighting game community in the FGC is that games within their ecosystem last forever. The only reason that they don't wind up playing anymore or, or stop playing them is that either a bigger or better game has kind of come out or there isn't enough people kind of playing it. But even then they have side pots, they have side games that are happening at at, uh, competitions where people are playing stuff that that they were playing in the early nineties and still being competitive for. So I think besides the actual like additions of these features that are in this particular game, this has the most legs even early that I've probably seen in a very long time because they have addressed so many of the issues that were in the previous games that people from the fighting game community, the most, you know, stalwart, staunch people who are like, we need this to be in here. They've addressed so much of that stuff in here that it can only get bigger in the way that it winds up coming to, to the table. So I think they've done a really smart job of landing all of those conversations. Now, the only thing they have to worry about is how do you get more characters into the system? Uh, how do you how do you bridge out some of the modes that we, that we talked about? That's like World Tour. How do you kind of you know keep the carrot on the end of the stick to make people want to touch that? And then you know what other kinds of layers do you add to the pot for the community that's really competitive? I think those are going to be things. And if the online layer of it doesn't break, oh they my have god, something they can play for a decade and easy. That's that's the big thing for me is the fact that this is the Street Fighter that I think is going to bring Street Fighter back in a the biggest and best way possible. Um, we've been talking on KFGD a lot about like the fighting games that are coming up and like, oh man, when is Tekken gonna come out? Is Tekken gonna be all right releasing around these things? And recently on a KFGD, I was talking to, to Greg about the fact that like, yo, I've been, I've been um, underrating or oh, yeah, I've been underrating Tekken 8 in terms of staying power because uh, uh, earlier in the week I was looking online, looking at sales numbers, looking at popularity and stuff and the last Street Fighter sold seven million, right? And it was a PlayStation exclusive. There's reasons that le- that leads to that versus Tekken Seven, which sold ten million, right? And, and even going before that, Tekken uh, or Street Fighter Four sold around like three million when uh, when it was all said and done. And Tekken also sold like three and a half million. And so they've been like more comparable, closer it, than people think. It's it's closer than people think, but we all we still talk about Street Fighter with this reverence. We talk about Street Fighter 
like it's the main character, even in the wake of Mortal Kombat, which we know is super popular, which we know in terms of sales, you know, is going to run away with it. It's one of the, it's, I think it is the best fighting, uh, selling fighting game franchise when you're talking about franchise numbers. Even within, in the wake of that, Street Fighter has a respect and has a reverence and has this hardcore, um, hardcore fighting game community love for it. And I think that comes strictly from its history and that comes strictly for what Street Fighter 2 on SNES brought to the table. And I think that is actually going to go, that, that's going to bring a lot into what we see Street Fighter 6 do as well, because, you know, their sales target for Street Fighter 6 is 10 million. I think this is going to blow that uh, uh, out of the water. I think it's going to outsell that by possibly a lot. Um, and that is the fact that Street Fighter, Street Fighter 5 wasn't great, right, for a lot of time, right? Street Fighter 5 took a lot of DLC to get where it needed to be to be considered, okay, this is actually good now. Um, Street Fighter 6, I think, is going to come out, and people are going to love it. People are going to like it on the ground floor. Of course, there's going to be critiques. There's going to be bounce stuff. All that stuff is going to be there. But I think people are going to like this way more than Street Fighter 5. And I think on the on the game mechanic side and on the marketing side as well, on the marketing side, they've been killing it. On the game mechanic side, to your question, Tim, in terms of, is this going to set the tone for, um, or set the standard for fighting games? Is it going to set the standard for Street Fighter? I think it's going to set the standard for free, for Street Fighter for sure. I think the overdrive system is is going to be excellent. I think the, um, the to what you're talking about in terms of being even, even a Smash person, and this game, speaking on a on a mainstream level, the drive system. I think ha having it just be a press of L1 and you have this big animation and the and then like the uh, <laughs> like the cool effects coming off of the back of the character that feels like an arcade mechanic that feels like almost like a party game type mechanic but it's implemented in this way that still feels hardcore it still feels like a thing that's going to make a big impact on um like the 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 Evo moments that we're going to see later in the year and yeah like this is going to be the main event at Evo. This is going to be the main event as, at possibly multiple Evos. And I ex at this point, I expect the same thing to happen with Tekken 8 as well. And I expect the same thing to happen with Mortal Kombat. I, I think Street Fighter is the like, first step into this new standard for fighting games. But yeah, I think we continue to see this over the year as well with Tekken 8 and with Mortal Kombat. I think all these games are going to be excellent. And yeah, like I think we're going to see fighting games be more popular than ever. I think, yeah, like I said, Street Fighter 6, I can see it way out selling its 10 million uh dollar target i can see tekken 8 also selling more than tekken 7 right because that's how the mm -hmm. things go and so that's gonna be more than 10, 10 million as well same with mortal Kombat. like oh, yeah. we're we're entering a new era and it's very exciting so we're gonna wrap up here Kyle. if you have any final words on this and my other last question for you do you see yourself playing this every week for the next what Oof. i mean i i'm already missing it <laughs> already mm -hmm. you know and that was the thing i was telling bless before we, we started the show today was like you know in between this review period you know we had a chance to play on the online servers and have some of those moments where we were playing together and against each other and you know they shut those servers off and i'm thinking about it right now i'm like man i want to continue to play i want to figure that stuff out like this will be a game depending upon again i have to preface this with my big mk love and you know seeing the back of it with my rug but it's like MK is my main game. It will always be my main game. But I think never before have I been this invested in a Street Fighter game this early, knowing how good everything feels, knowing that the characters feel really, really, really competent, knowing that I can feel competitive in a space. Because I, I was with you, Tim, with that conversation about, like, there's too many things going on, and I feel like I'm being overwhelmed by the minutia of things that I have to pay attention to. And now that I understand how those systems work, it is a much more kind of um, easy space to get into than the previous versions of in terms of the way that those inter uh, how, those, how those features kind of worked. Now, I'm definitely going to be in every week. Like, I'll be getting some, some games in. And I think it'll really depend, too, again, like, how many of my friends are playing this? You know, I'll mm -hmm. get in and play online against randoms, but the most fun that I'm going to have is going to be playing against people who are you know, a little bit over my skill level so I can learn and people who are at my skill level so I can feel like we are, you know, one for one kind of feeling in that space. So it's like, I'm going to be in this thing for a lot. <laughs> like, I'm going to be playing a ton of this in a, in a real way. I think this is, again, the best Street Fighter that I've played in a very long time. I'll use the KF scale. I'll give it a four out of five, too. And I think that this is not only one of the best games, I think this is one of the most important games for Capcom this slate. I think this is going to also leverage them up in a way that we haven't seen before. 
I think this is going to leverage up the rest of the fighting game community before, because it was a really small moment when outside forces were looking at the FGC and saying, how do we kind of infiltrate this space? You remember, they had Street Fighter tournaments on ESPN2 for a little bit. There was a time where that stuff was happening. I think a lot of those conversations are probably going to re-spark themselves as well to see, like, yeah. how do we talk about the FGC and build this up again to kind of give it that same level of prominence that we see in the esports spaces like a CSGO or, uh, or not CSGO, but CS or, or a League of Legends again. So it's, it's going to be a real fun time for the fighting games. Bless. Any final words on this? Yeah, I mean, this is the the Street Fighter did it right. Like my my the thing I was looking forward to was for the Street Fighter to be the one to pull fully pull me in and make me a big Street Fighter fan. And I'm a big fan of Street Fighter Six. And yeah, I plan to play this game for as long as I can. Right? Like I'm hoping that this takes me all the way to to Mortal Kombat, and that Mortal Kombat takes me all the way to Tekken, if depending on which one comes out first, obviously. Uh, yeah, and yeah, like I'm I'm so excited to like. I'm so excited for the rele the actual release of this game. I'm with Cobb that I already miss it, right? Like on I online seems to be off until the actual game comes out now. And so yeah, I can't wait to get back in there, start my ranked journey, try to get better and better. And I think it's gonna be a blast once this game is out for everyone. Hell yeah. Kyle, where can people find you? And thank you so much for joining us for this episode of PS I Love You. Oh my god, thank you so much for having me. It's my first time on PS I Love You. So I'm excited to be here and rocking with y'all. Again, you can check out all of my work at twitch.tv slash spawn on me. Check us out on Spotify. We're doing some really fun stuff over there. All podcast platforms around the world. And, and definitely come check me out at kylieforadams.com because I'm looking for work. So help help brother out. Put Hell me in the streets. Yeah. Make it happen. Go check him out. And stay tuned to youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames. All of the different podcast services. Search for Kind of Funny. And then just subscribe to anything that sounds interesting because you're watching PS I Love You right now. But over on the Kind of Funny Games cast in just a few short hours at 9 a.m. Pacific, Diablo 4 review oh. is going down. Ooh. It is review season. It's announcement season. It's just video game season, everybody. So stay tuned to, to Kind of Funny, whether it's live, whether it's at your leisure, watching, listening. We thank you for all of your support. Uh, and until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you.